see you. Good to see you, my friend. Your show is fantastic. It's really good, man. Thank uh, you. Painkiller on Netflix. Can't recommend it enough. Um, I'm only two episodes deep. Uh, I started the third today. It's so fucking good, dude. And it's so just it's so disturbing because it's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's an accurate account of how this all happened. And it's just it makes you so uncomfortable to think that there's people in the world that would do what the Sackler family did. Do you know anyone who's who's yes. gone down from from opioids? Quite a few. You? Yeah, same Quite here. A few people. Um, you know, when uh, when they first came to me uh, and asked me if I was interested, my buddy Eric Newman, who who put the whole thing together, uh, you know, said, "You want to do something about the Sacklers? Do you know who the Sacklers are?" And I did. I knew they were the you know family behind OxyContin. Uh, and he said, "Are you interested?" And I, I started thinking. I started counting the people I know who've died or whose kids have died uh, because of oxycontin and opioids. And I, I quickly got off of both fingers, you know. And then I, I started thinking about um, some of my heroes, my art, my artistic heroes, um, Chris Cornell, Tom Petty, and like one of my big heroes was Prince. I was a yeah. huge, huge Prince fan. I, I went to school in Minneapolis when he was coming up. Uh, I was an extra in Purple Rain back in the day, you know, wow. First Avenue in, in Minneapolis. And, you know, those three guys, when, when Prince died, you know, yeah. Prince was, he was su had such a, uh, he was legendary for his work ethic and his lifestyle, with no alcohol, no swearing, and just incredible work ethic. Yeah. And the fact that OxyContin got him. Yeah. And that that really kind of fucked with me. So when they came to me and, you know, started talking to me about doing something about the Sacklers, I was like, yeah, I'm all in. Um, and the more I dug into it, and the more experts and writers who have been covering this uh, epidemic for so long, the more I learned. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily the biggest conspiracy guy of all time. I, I do, uh, I'll, if the proof's there, I, I'm, I'm down. But the more I learned about the Sacklers and how they maneuvered what is essentially just heroin in like a little M&M &M pill, you know, how they were so artful and so good at manipulating the system. Uh, I was shocked and I, I was all in on painkiller. Well, I'm glad you were all in because people need to know this story and a lot of people aren't going to watch a documentary and, you know, they're not going to read about it. This is a very entertaining show that shows it accurately how this went down and you know, there's a, there's a moment, and I don't want to give too much away, but there's this one moment where this ethical doctor confronts the sales girl. And that's a very, very, very powerful moment. Yeah. Because that, the ethical doctor who knows everything about opiates is essentially explaining to this very young girl, just a beautiful sales girl, yeah. that you're selling heroin. You, it, this is heroin. It's indistinguishable to the body. It's, her, it's heroin. It's just you're calling it a different thing. And this idea that it's only 1% of the people have problems with it is, it, those numbers are all lies. They're, all lies. they're always lies. They lie about how many people died. They lie about how many people get addicted. It's all a lie. And the, if they can keep lying and not face any repercussions, they'll keep lying. Because that's they, they almost have an obligation to their shareholders to, to do that. Yeah, and in this case, they didn't even have shareholders. It was, yeah. it was a private it's company. Crazy. Uh, the uh, Richard Sackler and his his uncles were making all the money. They completely lied. I mean, they were doctors, and they yeah. knew how powerful the the opioid dosage was. They and they knew there were. And, and what else is crazy is they knew that if they just kept, they they would make so much more money by what they call titrating up. Right. So, you know, we put you on 10 milligrams of Oxycontin because you're you blew out your back in the gym and it works for a bit. And then when it doesn't, we're like, oh, well, we just got to we got to we got to kick you up. Yeah. So let's put you on 20 and then let's put you on 40. And they got up to 85 milligram Oxycontins. <sighs> they called them Oxycoffins. That was in the word on the street. And these these reps these cute little reps these pretty little college gra you know graduates who were just looking to make some money were paid based uh, bonuses based on the amount of milligrams in the pill so the, i'm 
I'm trying to convince you, if, if I'm a rep and, and you're a doctor, just to kick it up, doc, prescribe 20 or 40 or 85 milligrams and everybody will make some more money. And that was the game that the Sacklers were playing. And like, you know, I've said like, I'm, I'm down with capitalism, no problem. Like, make money, do it. And if, if you just look at the Sacklers, you know, from a capitalistic perspective and you apply you know uh, rules of capitalism and you're on their grade to get an a plus they were fucking good at making money you put like that much morality into the equation and these are some evil human beings 